to five tips to redefine family communication. We are honored you're spending time here learning more with Seesaw. I'm Angela and I taught kindergarten for 15 years using Seesaw in my classroom and I now lead the community time community time, oh my goodness, community team uh, full time here at Seesaw. I lead the community team, I should say. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Mrs. Gadke. I'd love to connect and see how you're putting into practice some of these ideas that we are sharing here today. And we're just going to hop right into it. We're going to go through five tips that you can try. Um, and if you are watching the recording, listen for a code that I'm going to say during the session. You will need that six character code to get a certificate if you are viewing this via a recording. So you'll have to listen up um, to hear that. So we're gonna hop right into tip number one, build family trust and support. And we're gonna do that with ongoing visibility into student learning. I am a firm believer in the fact that families want to be on the journey with you. And when they have that ongoing visibility, they actually can feel more comfortable knowing that you are doing amazing things when you are with their child for the majority of the day. So even starting from day one, these positive relationships um, based on respect and trust do require ongoing communication. So when we start talking about redefining family communication, you might start thinking first about what practices you have in place right now. And as we go through some of the ideas today, you might start to think, how might you change what you're currently doing or tweak it a little bit to try some of these ideas? Um, I also want to point out too, Seesaw does a great job of sharing that process of learning. It doesn't always have to be that end product that maybe, you know, families only see once every six weeks or at a family uh, or parent teacher conference. And the other thing is, um, I think families appreciate if you don't just say, you know, our partnership is really, really important, but actually show them that it is very important by communicating, by setting up a system where they feel like they're getting ongoing communication from your classroom. So I love this example, and this is from Melody, who is a preschool teacher. Uh, this is really her first post. It sets the tone for um, her year and is very welcoming to families and students, of course, really welcoming them as a partner in the journey. So I'm actually going to click on this and play this example so you can hear a little bit of how Melody approached this before students even walked into her classroom this year. Hi, I'm Mrs. Barnes and you found me. I'm so excited to meet you on our sneak peek day this Thursday. Even if you've been in our class, I still want you to come and here's why. I am going to make a giant family wall in the classroom because your family is the most important part of who we are. When you come, you can get a family photo taken that will be flown to eight and a half by 10 and put on our wall for your child to see anytime they'd like. Also, when you come, you can meet me in person, not just on the screen, and you can take a peek of the classroom. I hope to see you this Thursday. Bye-bye. So I thank Melody for that example. And again, when you get the slides, it might play a little bit smoother for you. But again, can you imagine as a family member getting that message and or your student entering um, this teacher's classroom, how that can really start building that trust from day one. Um, and I also have here some instructions that you could do to try this out. So if you haven't ever posted um, or even connected families yet, try to make sure there's something waiting inside Seesaw for them. So these are the instructions that you can follow as a teacher if you want to create a post. Some other ideas I've mentioned here is maybe in this, you could give a tour of your classroom or maybe read a book. I saw that a lot um, at the beginning of the school year, lots of teachers reading, you know, 
the night before first grade or all sorts of different books um, that they added to Seesaw as well. So just a couple things to think about. The other thing I want to mention too is that as a teacher, when you are getting started, um, it's okay if you maybe take a couple days and you are posting work. So this is from my kindergarten classroom a few years ago on the very first day of kindergarten. And I told my families, I said, hey, let's make sure you are connected to Seesaw because on that very first day of school, I'm gonna make sure that you have a peek at what your student is doing. So this was added to this child's portfolio because I knew, ooh, this is gonna be a great conversation starter when that student gets home and they can explain and elaborate. And again, not only um, am I communicating, but the student is also communicating and sharing their experience learning as well. Tip number two, we want to empower students to drive communication. And I have to say, one of the things that I really believe um, really sets Seesaw apart is the fact that students can do a lot of the posting to the classroom. So that really redefines the communication, I would say, direction, meaning the teacher doesn't have to be the only communicator, right? They're not the only ones that have to tell the story. So student posts are extremely powerful and very motivating for families. So I'm going to share just a couple of examples. And again, Families love hearing for the, from their child. And of course, when students are posting to Seesaw, they get the opportunity to do that. So we're gonna listen to this example. This is from a third grader. This is the circuit I made. And it didn't work at first because we had to switch around this piece right here for the positive and negative energy. And now you can see it works fine. Watch this, I'll switch on the switch. Just wait for it, and it will take off right now. Okay, so you can imagine the family getting a glimpse of that. Not only is this something that could come home, because obviously these are materials that would never make their way home from the classroom, but they can continue that conversation. The student is really taking ownership, not only in the work they did, but again, leading that conversation at home as well. And I also encourage you to, to think about communicating, and it's okay if it's even small moments, right? Sometimes I hear from teachers, well, I don't know, you know, would families want to see this? Should I add this or not? But even small moments for students, again, are helping build that relationship and building that story of student learning. So we're going to take a peek here. Um, so we made a cube, and it has 12 sides. Let me show you one of the sides right here. Here's the second one. Here's the third one. Here's the fourth one, fifth one, sixth one, seventh one, eight ones, ninth one, tenth, and twelfth. So there are twelve sides. And as you can tell, this is a little kindergarten friend. So again, no matter what age your students are, they can still take the lead in communicating as well. And again, families are right alongside in this journey. So when they maybe are coming to you for those parent-teacher conferences or family conferences, they're not surprised, right? They have been alongside of this learning throughout um, their time in your classroom. So this again is a try it opportunity. So here is a task card that actually um, we have getting started guides for every grade level and these task cards are included in those guides. So again, these are really simple um, posters that you could hang up in your classroom that students, again, can independently drive this communication and be posting to Seesaw to share their learning. Tip number three, ensure communication is accessible. So of course we want to make sure that all families get communication from school. So when we talk about Seesaw in 
relation to this, we want to make it really simple and accessible for all families. So it is free for families, of course, to get connected or even download this, the, the family app. It works on any device. And if you're thinking about, you know, maybe you're thinking about, you know, the demographics of families in in many situations, families have cell phones, so they can either, you know, maybe they can download the app if they don't have, you know, a huge data plan. Maybe they're connecting to Wi-Fi when they're at your school or a public library or other situations like that if they want to, you know, view work. I've also heard of schools that set up um, stations that families can use to sign in as well to their Seesaw account. And I want to just point out, too, that when you're using Seesaw, notifications come to them. It's not something that families have to remember, like, oh, yeah, I remember there was this supposed to be this blog or website I was supposed to check every week. With those notifications, it comes right to families, again, making it more accessible for them. And of course, translation. I really want to talk about this a little bit because we want to make sure what we are sending is able to be, you know, of course, understood by any family member that you're working with. So Seesaw actually translate text into over 55 languages. I also have a link here um, that shows a video of how you actually invite families if you haven't done that yet. So give that a peek um, if you want to when you get the slides. But I want to highlight translation a little bit because it's it's so simple for some people that it gets complicated. It's really, really simple. So basically, here's what happens. Translation is automatic. So what that means is anytime you type a note, a comment, a message, or announcement, they are automatically, they can be automatically translated to the language that the device is set to. So in this example, um, this is actually, a translation that actually happened from a, a parent back to the teacher. So you'll see that the parent, the family member actually wrote in their, you know, first language, um, which is Spanish. And the teacher, when they receive this message, the teacher sees the this C translation option. So if they click that, it will translate the text. So again, it works for the teacher and it also works for the family the same way. So if the teacher is writing or typing in English or their student is writing and typing in English, when it goes to the family, whatever device, whatever language the device is set to. So if the device is set to Somali, if it's set to French, if it's set to Chinese, it will translate those written notes, comments, messages and announcements in Seesaw automatically once they tap that C translation, which is pretty phenomenal. Tip number four, utilize engaging formats to meet families where they are. So when we think about families today, we know life is busy. Inboxes are really, really overwhelming and time is limited. So you might have families that are working full time. Maybe they're working two or three jobs. Maybe, you know, they're running kids around, right? There's a lot going on. So how do we make sure that families are informed and can help prepare their child for the day or whatever they need, right? So we want to make sure it's easy, but also digestible and in formats that work for families. Um, I remember um, at a beginning of your conference, I, I remember one dad said to me, are you going to send a lot of emails? Am I going to get a lot of emails from you? Because I don't have time to read those. Um, and he was he was concerned and overwhelmed with the amount of emails coming um, in previous years um, from other teachers or whatnot. And I said, no, I actually do something a little bit differently. Um, and the next slide here will give you kind of an example. So let's let's compare. So maybe you're someone that's doing type newsletters. So here's an example of a newsletter that long ago, before I started using Seesaw that I would type uh, an entire, you know, full length piece of paper, right? Single space, lots of information, right? Good stuff. But how many families were reading that? I'm not sure, right? 
So when CISO comes along, what about doing a video newsletter? And I love this example from Abby, and this was actually just shared this week, and I thank Abby for letting me uh, share with the world here. So Abby is actually a, a PE teacher. Sorry, I was just getting it to the right spot here. And I'm gonna play this for you so you can take a listen at her video newsletter. Hey everyone. I know we only had a short time together this week, maybe only having one class, but the time that we spent together was awesome. This week we explored our jump rope routine plan, where you all got to plan how you were going to do your routine. Did this make a difference? Is it different than just saying, hey, show me a routine, and you not have the time to think about what you're going to do and how you're going to perform it? So I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I encourage you to follow the link in the slides, but also reach out to Abby and say, hey, I saw your idea. I love it. So if you just think about the different formats. So when I'm talking about accessible, digestible, you know, something that is going to be motivating for not only families to view, but also um, students could as well, right? Um, via the family app, they could also view this as well. So think about maybe that's a shift that you want to make or try and again this is really easy to do as a teacher in seesaw you can just create a new announcement and start a video if you wanted to do that really really simple also this is an example um, from my classroom and again this was sent via the announcement flow to families and this is just a short quick visual reminders. So I, we were having a special, you know, favorite book day at school and I sent a quick message um, to families just reminding them, again, very visual, um, audio instructions here and also a caption. And this caption, again, because it's typed, it would be translated for families as well. Hi families, tomorrow, Friday, if you will have your child bring their favorite book from home to school, we're gonna use it for a project that we do. And if you don't feel comfortable with them bringing a book from home, they can obviously select a book from our books in our classroom, but we're gonna be doing a project with rec so again, I think the other thing that lends itself well in these formats is it's much more personable. So back to that story of that dad that was saying, oh, I'm not going to read these emails. If you send emails, he was the most excited about getting you know, my audio visual newsletters that I sent are even better that my students created. So again, it might be something that they're listening to when they're waiting the line at the grocery store or they're running, you know, all over um, trying, you know, life is busy. What can keep them in the loop and engaged? Tip number five, encourage three-way communication. And you're thinking, what does that involve? I'm talking about students, teachers, and family. So not only traditionally can a teacher communicate with a family, but the family can also communicate back to the teacher. So when you're talking about that in Seesaw, that can be in the form of a private message back to the teacher from an announcement. That might also be the family leaving a comment for the student on Seesaw. And of course, we, as we mentioned before, the student can always be sharing their work to their family on Seesaw as well. And as we know, the, the relationship between the teacher and the student is also ongoing and a lot of back and forth communication there as well. But one way that I also want to highlight that you might not be aware of, and we'll get, get into that, but thinking about even audio comments. So again, making it a little bit more personal and, and speaking from my experience in, in kindergarten with a lot of pre-readers, if you want that feedback and communication to happen, what is going to maybe make that work better for your students? So think about that. If you want families to type in comments or if you want them rather to do audio commenting, um, you can also, as I mentioned, private messages between the family and the teacher are also something that is an option. And I'm gonna talk about one that, again, maybe you haven't thought about yet, but this is something that really is very, very unique about Seesaw in the sense that from the family app, families can also respond to an announcement and use attachments. And when they tap this blue little plus sign right here in response to an announcement, they can use all the tools in Seesaw. 
So this example, I love this from Eric Robinson. So he actually did a webinar that's on our YouTube channel all about uh, rethinking reading logs or uh, encouraging reading at home. It's phenomenal. So if you haven't seen that yet, check it out. But basically, families can reply and maybe they're posting a video of their student, you know, showing like, oh my goodness, we're eating pizza at home and we're learning about fractions at the same time. Or, hey, Mrs. Gadke, look at this picture of I, you know, was reading under, you know, my pillow fort or whatever. It might be um, a drawing that they're doing. Again, through attachments, they can actually add that through the Seesaw Family app. So either the family can respond that way um, or the student could also as well. So that's kind of a safe way to bring that learning, again, full circle, not only going from school to home, but back again. I wanna just talk briefly um, in this conversation about the journal versus the inbox. So I have a little graphic here um, of thinking, like, should this be in the student's portfolio? So when you think about the journal, that is really the portfolio of showing growth over time. So work that students have captured or want to share, that goes into the journal, right? And any time that a teacher approves those posts, those are visible to that family member, okay? So you might use this if you're doing, um, for example, when I shared that picture of the student on the very first day of kindergarten doing that science experiment, I actually posted that to the portfolio. And again, it was only to that, that child's portfolio, it wasn't to the whole class, okay? But most of the communication you might do as a teacher would take place via the inbox flow. So that is where you would see the teacher to family communication, family to teacher communication or those sharing learnings from home which we just talked about so the other thing to note as well is who can see it this is just kind of a good reminder too so in the journal if in your class settings you have students can see each other's work turned on families only see work their child is tagged in this does include any work that you tag with everyone because of course their child is included in everyone in the class. Um, all approved comments from families are visible in the journal to all students if this is how your class is set up. And families can see all comments made on any of their child's posts, okay? So if you have students that are commenting on a child's post, that family could see that comment as well. And looking at the inbox, announcements are all connected. Connected family members can see. And they only see announcements after they connected, not prior announcements. So keep that in mind as well. And then those private messages are only visible to the teacher and the one family member that are having that conversation. So that's just another thing to note. I want to quickly give out the code you'll need if you're watching this re recording. The code is 238566. And again, you only need that if you're watching the recording for the certificate. I wanna just throw one more thing out at you before we go into questions. We have a great page, a website for you to use if you are introducing CESA to families. So maybe this is at a curriculum night or a family information night. This is a good spot to go to introduce families to CESA, but also show them a tour of the family side of the family app. Um, and also get them connected on the spot. So we're going to hop into questions now. And while you are typing in those questions, I want to just show you one more thing here as well. That, of course, you found this session. All of our PD and PJs can be found at web.seesaw.me backslash PDS. Also, make sure you check out our YouTube channel and subscribe there because, woo, we add a lot to that spot and be the first to know when we have new stuff there. So make sure to check that out as well. So I'm gonna hop back here and answer questions for those of you that are live. 